In previous episodes when we've looked at DaVinci Resolve, we focused very much on basic color correction. This time we want to dive in a little bit more and start to look at color grading. In this particular case, we're going to look at a look that could be used for kind of a dream sequence, or could be used, um, if we take it another step farther, for smoothing out skin or smoothing out light on someone's face. Check this out. All right, just a couple notes before we get started here. Number one, uh, we are again, for those of you that are just joining us here and haven't seen the previous episodes, we're using DaVinci Resolve Lite. So there's a free application that's downloadable from uh, Blackmagic Design, and we'll have a link for that down below. You can use it free. There is a catch, of course, and that catch is that you need to have a fairly powerful computer with a powerful graphics card to make this work. So you're probably not gonna use it on your Ultrabook if you're, you know, if, or something like that. But if you've got a, a, you know, a bigger computer, an iMac, a relatively recent iMac, or a, you know, a PC that's fairly well outfitted, ideally with an NVIDIA graphics card that has CUDA capabilities. So that's the, the main idea. Now, a couple of things, uh, it is April 8th, 2014 as I record this and it is the week of NAB. NAB is a, a sort of the video and filmmaking technical show in Las Vegas each year where they announce uh, lots of manufacturers come and announce new products. Blackmagic Design announced a bunch of new things but one of the for me one of the most exciting things they announced is a new version of DaVinci Resolve version 11 and in version 11 they are upping their game and adding a lot of editing features so instead of having to necessarily use something like Premiere Pro or Final Cut, you could actually do a lot of your work right here in DaVinci Resolve. So if you don't have an editor already, that's something to, to take a look at once they release that. It's coming up. It's I don't believe it's been released yet, but it is coming up soon. And just check the DaVinci, or sorry, the Blackmagic Design website to see the latest information on that. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to go ahead and start with our basic color correction, just like we have in the past, but I'm going to make pretty quick work of it this time. I've got my parade scope down here. And uh, this is my typical kind of process here for this particular scene where I've got the black background and just me. So what I do here is first of all, we come into our lift and we, looking at our um, parade here, we see this is the black background here. It's not totally black and we wanna actually crush that. So we come over here and just push that down until that bar disappears on our parade scope on all three colors. Keep going. A little bit more, somewhere right in there. Then I'll just come up in here and bump the gain up so that my, uh, you know, I don't want to actually press it up against this top line here, but bring it up so we've got nice contrast going. Probably somewhere in that range. And then I will also come in here. I, I actually used a backlight here, a kicker that has a little tiny bit of a green tint to it. So I'll actually come over here and just barely notch that down in the highlights just a touch. Okay, so there's our basic color correction. Now, in DaVinci Resolve, we haven't talked a lot about this, but you actually have these different nodes. And, and if you're coming from a photography background or if you're at all familiar with Photoshop, it's kind of a, it's kind of similar, not exactly similar, but kind of similar to layers. And you can add additional nodes here. So we're gonna add a new serial node here because what we wanna do is use something called a layer node. And this is very much like Photoshop in this particular case. And so you can see what it did here is we have our first node here and that's where we did our basic color correction. Now we have this new layer here and then a mixer node. So I have my, you know, kind of this main, the main uh, node here, I've got this secondary node here. I don't know if it's really called primary and secondary, but I've got these two nodes here that then get mixed together here. So um, to see the effect here, we need to add one more node, a serial node after that. So this will be our final output here. So on this layer mixer, we actually get a choice of how we wanna mix these, these two nodes here. And that's a choice under composite mode here. Just like in Photoshop, we have a lot of the same things. You'll recognize these again if you've used these before. In our particular case, we're gonna want to choose overlay. So as soon as I choose that, you can see, ooh, kinda made my video a little bit cartoonish. Well, all we wanna do is come down to this lower node here in our layer, our lower layer, and let's just pull that um, saturation back, maybe somewhere into the 30 range. That's a little closer to reality, but we're getting that kind of high contrast look, and we'll take care of that in just a second here. Now, to get the kind of dream-like look, what we'll do is we'll come in here to our blur, blur 
and we're going to change this if it is normally selected on blur first let's choose mist and then we just want to take the radius and crank that up to the top and you can see right away it's done something interesting here it's kind of done this extreme version of this uh, soft focus and that's probably a way too much way more than we want but that's not a problem all we do is come back in here to our key and we can drop the gain on that until it comes back to get a little closer to reality we don't want to go too crazy but maybe somewhere in that range there okay so let's what look this is what it looks like after so you can see it has softened things up a little bit and that's what it looked like before and then we softened it up just to get a look just to kind of get frame of reference this is how we started and then this is what we're looking like right now so so that's an interesting look and you know if you're doing a dream sequence you could kind of crank this up a little bit more and have it look a little you know dreamy if you will <laughs> for me for my taste mostly that's going to be a little too much but if we wanted to just sort of soften the skin and not apply this look across the entire image what we might do is actually a couple of things first we might use our qualifier and what a qualifier does is it lets you select a certain part of the image to apply the effect to based on hue which is color saturation and luminance so um, let's just turn this on right here so this is how we can see what we're selecting and I just press and hold down my button and I select here until all the skin is selected pretty much there we go you can see it's also selected some other things here so that's not perfect but we, what we can do let's blur it so we'll blur the edges of that selection so it kinda looks a little smoother and we might actually shrink it too to include less of the hair but we want to make sure all the skin is still selected all right, so that's what we get. Now it's really only applying that effect to the skin and not to the rest of the image here. And the rest of the image pretty much in this case is, is my hair and the shirt here. Um, so again, we could come back into the key and we could refine that so we could increase the gain to, to increase the effect on the skin. But if we wanted to kind of fine tune it even more, you can see it's still selecting some of my hair. It's got a little bit of the shirt, not a big deal, but if we wanted to kind of fine tune that even more, we could come in here and use what's called a power window and we just select that and we would just uh, say in addition to the the qualifier which we've already chosen we also want to narrow down the parts that we affect to just here so what I do first of all is kind of size it so that it's it's covering my face and then I use this outer circle this is this is kind of the feathering so the strongest effect will be in here and then it will kind of um, feather off until it's no longer affecting the stuff out here so that's the idea there now the problem of course is that we're using we're doing video so this image is gonna move so this power window isn't gonna help us everywhere unless we actually use tracking so we come over here to the tracking pane and what I'll do here is just use the back arrow and it's actually going to automatically go through and track my face and when you're doing something like a face it does a fantastic job of tracking it as you can see here um, if it ever gets off, you can always pause it and, and go into inter interactive mode and actually help correct it and get it going again. But again, for faces, it's almost always going to track really nicely. So you get the idea there. Let's go ahead and pause it. Turn that off. Now you can see it's really just applying this look to the face now. It's not affecting the rest of the image. And so this is a great way, I think, one way, I should say, not a, necessarily a great way, but it is a it is one way to um, apply a sort of a skin smoothing effect and it also kind of softens the light on the face as well so it can be really helpful for those types of situations now again i am not a colorist i am just learning here so if you if i've said something here that isn't necessarily correct and you know better uh, be kind and leave us a constructive comment down below so we can all learn through, from that and I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for checking out the episode. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that, and we'll get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.